Hey, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. Happy 2023. Um, <laughs> let's get into the video. Advice that I would give myself this time last year in order to set better goals for the new year. It's a bit of a mouthful of a title, but let's get into it. So I love setting goals. I love setting New Year's goals, I love setting mid-year goals, I love setting goals in September. Any time of year I love to set goals. I like getting out my notebook and my planner and writing down plans, writing down goals that sound really good on paper. I like the whole idea of goal setting and I especially do love setting goals in January. I think this is a great time of year to set goals, but I don't love the disappointment and discouragement that comes with forgetting your goals two weeks after the new year starts. So having tried to set goals numerous times in the past, these are some of the things that I've learned mostly in this past year that I think will help make my goal setting better. So this is the advice that I would give to myself in order to set better goals in the new year. My first piece of advice is to cut the fluff. I am so bad when it comes to this. I get so caught up in the excitement of setting goals that I tend to write down things that sound good on paper um, but aren't necessarily meaningful to me. Or even worse than that, I will scroll through Pinterest and social media to get inspiration for goals that I want to set. Um, but I don't think that is the best way or the most successful way to go about setting goals. So my advice to myself is to cut the fluff. Look at the goals you've written down and assess, are these meaningful to me or are these things that just sound nice on paper? Are these things that I really want to achieve or things that mm, it would be nice if these came naturally to me, but they're not something I'm willing to invest the time, energy, and effort it takes to actually achieve them. So for example, waking up at 5 a.m. That sounds great on paper. It looks pretty cool on social media, but is it something that I'm willing to commit to and do the work it takes in order to achieve that? Or is it something that just sounds nice? Maybe waking up earlier is a more realistic goal, maybe it's meaningless to me and I actually want to prioritize my sleep more and then you end up with these contradicting goals. Um, so I think it's important to look for things that you've written down simply because they sound good and the advice I would give to myself is to take that list of goals that, that you've written and cut it in half. Get rid of 50% of what you've written down. I know it's going to be difficult to do this because Already you feel attached to those goals, but I think it will feel better to cut them off your list right now than to look back at that list in two weeks and feel disappointed that you maybe woke up at 5 a.m. twice, maybe once, maybe not at all. It's take out the unnecessary disappointment of not following through with your goals by just cutting out all the fluff. You don't need 50 goals. You don't need 25 goals just because it looks really nice on a document and in your notebook. Set goals that are actually valuable to you that you're much more likely to follow through with and sustain rather than writing down things that look nice on a vision board, look nice on a goal list, but don't actually mean anything to you. My next piece of advice that I would give myself is that small, smaller is better tiny is best. Um, so what I mean by this is take those goals that you've written down and intentionally and mindfully think of ways that you can make them smaller. We often talk about this idea of smart goals and we want to come up with specific things and actionable items and concrete goals, but I think it's really valuable and I've talked about this a little bit before on my blog. Um, the idea of these tiny habits, and I think the same thing can be applied to your goals. Look at what you're trying to achieve in any context and see if you can make it smaller and more achievable. Um, so for example, the ways that this has worked for me in the past, 
Number one, I've talked about, you're going on a diet, you're planning to be in this 500 calorie deficit and you're going to start tracking everything you eat. You haven't done, you've never tracked every, anything before and you've never eaten in, in a deficit before. So this is a huge goal to ask of yourself. So for one, I think you can choose one or the other to begin with. I don't think you need to be tracking absolutely everything for the first time and putting yourself in a 500 calorie deficit. I think that's unrealistic. Um, so maybe the way to make this smaller might be, okay, I'm not gonna track everything. Maybe I'll track one meal a day, or maybe I'm not gonna track anything, but I'm gonna be more mindful. And by that, I mean, I'm going to make it a priority to eat three meals a day. I'm not gonna worry about tracking them. I'm not gonna worry about my macronutrients yet. I'm just gonna get into the habit of eating consistently three meals a day and not eating nothing and then overeating at night. I've talked about this quite a bit before. Um, obviously, it's something meaningful to me and that I believe in. But on the other side of things, I've also talked about, okay, so you have experience with tracking and you're feeling like you're ready to go on a diet, you have this goal to cut a few pounds of body fat, and you've established that now is a good time for you and that this is a healthy goal for you right now. Instead of going into that 500 calorie deficit and then struggling to sustain it for the necessary amount of time and then maintain that weight loss, make it smaller, cut 200 calories, start with 200 calories. See how that goes. After three or four weeks, maybe cut an additional 100 calories. Make it smaller. <laughs> smaller is better. Smaller is more sustainable. I have learned this from my own experience. I know that it is tempting to go big and to go for these grand goals, especially in the new year, but trust me, and I'm speaking to myself, smaller is better. Um, it's just so much easier. When I finally, after I had finished university, I'd really not worked out at all in university. Once I got into the routine of working and being an adult, when I was finally able to get back into a consistent workout routine, I started with workouts that were only 20 minutes long. It was very motivating to know that the workout was gonna be over really quickly. It was easy to show up and easy to know that it was going to be done. And then I built from there and I enjoy working out, um, but it still took me time to build that routine and build that consistency. So starting with only a 20 minute workout made it much more sustainable for me. So start smaller. Five days a week working out, okay, that's, a great amazing goal maybe five days a week for 20 minutes I do think doing that consistency consistency throughout the week um, is important and will help you establish the habit but make it smaller don't read for one hour don't read 10 pages read for five minutes read one page if this is something that you haven't been doing whatsoever start small and if it's something you want to progress in take a small step forward if you're already reading a chapter a day read a chapter plus five minutes i don't know set a small step forward for yourself don't try to commit to these really big goals and then feel disappointed when you can't sustain those those changes and discouraged when you just quit and you give up altogether my next piece of advice is that consistency moves mountain. Consistency is your new best friend. Um, this is something that I think I knew and we all know, but is sometimes hard to put into practice and sometimes difficult to believe in. So for me, um, where I really saw, where this was really validated for me when I started to build muscle and I really committed to building muscle. I felt like for the last five years, ugh, building muscle is really hard. It's impossible. Um, there's no real changes. I just had all these like discouraging thoughts about when it, when it came to building muscle, yet I had never actually 
committed consistently to building muscle. So within the last three or four months, I have been consistent. I have shown up consistently. I have eaten my calories. I have done my best to recover and I've gotten results and I've made progress. And that has been so motivating for me um, to feel like things actually change and things are actually possible. Getting results is super motivating no matter what you're doing. And those results come from being consistent. For me, even something like doing push-ups. I used to do push-ups maybe like once a month in a random workout and they would be so difficult and I would feel so discouraged. Once I started doing push-ups consistently in a few of my workouts throughout the week, suddenly my push-up strength was so much better and I got stronger and they weren't this like horrible, uncomfortable thing to do anymore. I was actually pretty good at them and then I could progress and I could set more goals when it came to push-ups. The same thing applies to any strength training and building muscle and losing fat and learning a new skill. And I think it's important to mention that changing your eating habits and your physical activity habits takes practice. It's not easy when you start and you have to learn a lot along the way. So it's important that you actually give yourself that opportunity to practice. So whatever your goal is, choose something and be consistent with it. Don't be onto something for two weeks and then onto something else and then back to this and back to that and feel frustrated that you're not getting any results. You have to accept that change is really, really slow that's why doing something small frequently um, is more sustainable. So change takes a long time to happen. Be consistent and you will get results and you will be so much more motivated to keep going. And suddenly a year won't feel so long and you'll be just so excited to see what's possible when you are consistent for that longer period of time because you know that it works and it's not a guessing game, it's not a secret. Consistency, is the answer. Consistency is magical. <laughs> and then my next point that I wanted to make and the piece of advice that I would give to myself, which honestly kind of came from my boyfriend, um, is that failure is information. So there was a part of me that was frustrated that I had wasted all this time doing stupid stuff and I mean that can mean a lot of things but I've always I've wanted to work on improving my body composition and I was disappointed that you know I had started diets and went off diets and started different styles of eating and changed that up and just felt like I had been so inconsistent and I felt like I had tried and failed at different things numerous times and so that was discouraging to me but my boyfriend said that made a comment to me about all of those attempts were learning experiences for me and they were the they are what led me to where i'm at today and they are what helped me to gain the information that i have today i think it's important to look at failure as information as cliche as it might sound every time something doesn't work there's an opportunity to learn from that um, so maybe you've been on 10 diets in the past and you've failed don't see that as disappointing or discouraging, and I know that's much easier said than done, but take that as an opportunity to learn. Maybe you've tried to be in these really big calorie deficits and it's not working for you. Okay, take that information, adapt, try again. Um, you've tried going to the gym five days a week and it's just not realistic for you. You can't be consistent with that. Take that information, adapt, try again. Try some home workouts try changing up the way you're eating try just prioritizing eating whole foods you know there's lots of different ways to go about things i also think it's worthwhile to say that sometimes it just takes a lot of attempts for something to stick and for you to be successful just because dieting hasn't worked in the past it doesn't mean that eating in a calorie deficit doesn't work for you it just hasn't worked for you in the past it hasn't been the right time maybe now is not the time to go on a diet. Don't see failure as a reason to give up. The only way you don't make progress is by giving up. Try not to see failure as a reason to quit. 
take those failures as opportunities to learn and do that. Learn from the experience. What didn't work? What did work? What can I do differently moving forward? How can I set myself up to be more successful next time? But also realize that I will continue to fail. Like life is going to be full of failure and that's okay. The skill is learning how to fail, how to understand what worked, what didn't work and how to keep going and not to let mistakes, failures, disappointments set you back and hold you back. Learn, adapt, move on, keep going. That's been, that's my motto. That was kind of my 2022 motto and I'm carrying it with me into 2023. Just keep going. You will continue to learn and grow as long as you keep going. Okay, the last piece of advice that I want to give to myself a year ago um, or to anybody else who can relate to what I was feeling and as well as a lot of this advice continues to apply to me today um, is to start building muscle. <laughs> I give this in right now I would give this advice to anyone. Um, obviously you can discern if this is right for you right now. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe your situation, it's not right for you. But for myself this time last year, I was training for a half marathon. Um, but I had really never committed to building muscle. I had flip flopped a lot between working on strength, but I would say 80% of the time I was trying to diet and lose fat. For no real reason, I just always felt like I needed to lose 5 or 10 more pounds and that would help me get the physique that I wanted because I do have physique goals for myself. Um, but I always went about pursuing that through dieting. Despite the fact that there is a lot of information on social media now um, and just kind of in pop culture, encouraging resistance training and muscle growth for women, but I had never taken the steps to commit to that. The best I had ever done was try to do kind of a body recomposition where I was eating in a deficit, but still strength training and resistance training, which is a great way to maintain the existing muscle. But the physiques that I look at and that I wanted to, that I aspire to and wanted to try to achieve with my own body have a ton of muscle mass. I think muscle looks incredible on women and that's something that I want to achieve for myself. But it took me like nine months into 2022 before I actually committed to going to the gym, training hard, training to build muscle, not changing up my program too frequently and eating to support the muscle mass that I was trying to build. When I finally made that decision, I started to build muscle and I started to see results. But it took me, in my opinion, way too long. I wish I would have started doing this years ago um, because my results would be greater by now. But years ago was a great time to start. Today is also a great time to start. So if you are like me and you want to change your physique and you're not entirely sure how to go about getting there, you understand the necessity of fat loss and you understand the role of muscle, but you're kind of questioning whether, okay, do I cut or do I bulk first? Bulk first. I want to encourage you to commit to building muscle. I also want to say if you want to have health and fitness goals that don't involve the number on the scale or trying to get smaller or trying to lose fat and maybe you just want to improve your health start building muscle make building muscle one of your goals i think it is so valuable it changes the experience you have in the gym it changes the relationship you have with food and for me it makes each workout more enjoyable and more valuable i'm going into the gym and i'm focused on making progress every single day. Resistance training is more enjoyable when you're not doing it as a means for fat loss. Going to the gym is more enjoyable when you're not eating in a calorie deficit and expecting yourself to then increase your activity as well. And your body will change in ways you want it to without having to be on a diet. And then maybe down the road when it's time for you and you're ready to go on a diet, 
it'll be easier because you have this increased muscle mass that's metabolic tissue that burns more calories and your physique when you actually lose weight will look different and it will be more of what if you're like me you're aiming for that toned look that definition comes from having muscle mass and muscle mass takes time and commitment to build so please if you are unsure of what your new year's goal is and you want to improve your physique you want to improve your health you want to start exercising more please start building muscle you will thank yourself in a year from now when you have committed to this year to building that muscle mass and it will it's just it's wonderful i am so much enjoying the process. I'm so excited to see what will come from this moving forward. And I just, I can't recommend it enough. And I wish that I would have started building muscle this time last year, um, but I'm still grateful to myself for starting to build muscle when I did. It's January 2nd of 2023. I have pretty much set my goals for the new year. However, I also know that those goals will adapt throughout the year. Um, life happens, things change, I get different inspiration at different times. But I wanted to make this video as a way of helping you, um, if you're watching this and you're still thinking about your new year's goals or maybe just give you something to reflect on, um, and look back at what goals you have set for yourself and maybe make a few tweaks. I'm really speaking to anyone who is like me as well as I'm speaking to myself right now, just to help set myself up for success when it comes to setting New Year's resolutions and make them a positive experience and not turn them into something that you eventually start avoiding because they end up being discouraging. So I hope that this information is helpful to you. Um, I would love to hear any other advice that you would give to your former self when it comes to setting goals. What advice do you use when you're setting goals right now? Um, and please share with me what your New Year's resolutions are if you don't, if you feel comfortable doing so in the comments below. Um, I might make a video, a separate video talking about my specific goals for the year, we'll see. But yeah, I just wanted to share kind of my thoughts when it comes to setting goals for the new year or for any time of year and hope that it would be valuable to someone who's watching this. So thank you so much for watching. I hope to be sharing more videos um, in the new year. Please subscribe if you want to see more from me. I will have this written out as a blog post as well. So you can find that on my website, on my blog. Um, and I also have a little post about this on my Instagram if you want just a few quick like Coles notes um, covering kind of what I talked about in this video. So please subscribe if you want to follow kind of my own health and fitness journey and I just share kind of health and fitness related content. I'm just having fun. I don't know what my niche is. I'm just figuring things out. Um, but I would really love to connect with anybody who's watching this share with me what your ambitions are for the new year, um, why you love health and fitness, what brought you to this channel. I'd love to start connecting with people more here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best in the new year and I hope you can go crush the goals that you've set from this video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.